There is nothing more difficult for a truly creative painter than to paint a rose, because before he can do so, he has first to forget all of the roses that were ever painted. Henri Matisse Henri Matisse, born in 1869 in Le Cateau, Cambrésis, France, began to form his language of unmistakable swooping lines and bold lyrical color after an appendix attack in youth had his mother bringing him art supplies as he convalesced in bed. He promptly broke his father's heart by leaving his law studies for Paris, having discovered what he said was a kind of paradise in paint. His Parisian studies with Moreau were expanded when a friend gave him a Van Gogh drawing, which changed his approach forever. Matisse's eye for color, his masterful compositional composure, and his jubilant instinctual lyricism leaked out towards influencing a whole new wave of modern art. Aesthetically playful, despite being confined to his own intimate environment, during an illness and immobility that marked his later years, Matisse transformed the domicile walls that we own by covering them with his joy. I'm trying to do what I have never done. Give the impression one has of entering a room. One sees everything, and at the same time, nothing. Pierre Bonnard. Pierre Bonnard was born in fontenay aux roses France, in 1867, within an era of great change in art, off-put by the vigor of the Cubist movement, and cleaving to his own inner call, he became a prolific member of the Nabis, who had championed the works of Paul Gauguin, and who had adhered to intense color structure and flatness, bold patterns of Japanese influence, came sailing through. His own bold language fully formed as the Nabis disbanded, and he struggled to capture the essence of light, faces, and places that held his own intimacy. In a slow revolution of seeing, Bonnard abandoned formal accuracy, especially within the depiction of sunlight, and he adhered permanently to an exaggerated and sumptuous color palette. He transformed the domestic environment to a sensitive arena of discovery and emotive quietude. I do not always find city streets interesting, so I wait until I see picturesque groups and those that compose well in relation to the whole. Child Hassam. Child Hassam was born in 1859 in Dorchester, Massachusetts, a descendant of Massachusetts Bay Colony and the son of an antique collector. His youthfully confident countenance had him at first engraving and then illustrating before entrancing New England with colloquial watercolors, which soon became light-loaded oil paintings of memorable stature. Seeking Paris as a bolster against the critics who had sought more classical solidity in his work, he pursued and extended his prolific energy towards Impressionism and its gentle crescendo, celebrating the fall of light through both urban and domestic environments. Hassam's languid figures quietly asked to be part of history from within their elegant environs. He dappled them in light, color, and contemplation. My works were an emotional reaction to something I find beautiful in the subject, which provides the energy and impetus to paint. Jane Freilicher. Jane Freilicher, born in Brooklyn, New York in 1924, lived the poetic impulse in form. Indeed, Fairfield Porter called her work traditional, radical, broad, and bright when he wrote about her in 1955's Art Forum. And Freilicher personified Porter's words. When remembering her parents, bringing her tiny, brightly colored bouquets of flowers as a child. She described them as unusually entrancing. Freilicher spent the rest of her years in that same floral gaze, eloping right after Pearl Harbor and landing a life of bohemian exploration in the arts, music, and poetry. 
studying with Hans Hoffmann in an era that burst forth with expressionistic brushstrokes. Freilicher quietly distinguished herself from fellow students Willem de Kooning and Wolf Kahn while uniting with them in her adherence to color. In 1948, after viewing an exhibit of Bonnard that moved her deeply, she pared down to the aesthetic essentials and painted a life from the window's ledge in deliberate, poetic, inside-world, outside-world balance. Deceptively simple, and yet visually rich, her soft, buttery strokes of light transformed the mundane towards mystery.